And they're living on the streets. It was a white van, I know my feet. I've seen a flying saucer. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Lost Frequency Podcast, and today we have Bettina on. More of that later after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Tom, and I'm Rye. And I'm Tom, and he's Rye. Yes. Yeah, that way that way you get to hear my voice, too. Tom and... And that's uh, the motorbike? That's uh, We have a ton of motorcycles here. Yeah. We so, do. we always do these things where we... We do things? Uh, yeah, we do, well, we do a lot of things. We, we tomato do. sandwiches, uh, jackhammer holes in the street, all kind of stuff. Well, I, jackhammer holes. <laughs> what? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I've done that before. Well, uh, why? At the airport, I used to put it Okay. Well, with, with the condition of these roads, man, I'm sure there's some people out there jackhammering some oh, of those dude, holes in the streets, man. Yeah, you you would think there's somebody running, like some random, like like a serial killer, but he does just jackhammering instead. Yeah, middle of the night, no one's there. He's just it's driving like, around with an air compressor. It, it, it's, well, because it's rainy season right now, It's uh, those holes are getting deeper and deeper. Yeah. And they get hidden because the water is all pooled around there. And you don't even know there's a hole in there. And the next thing you know, it's like, bang. You're like, oh, man. You're, yeah. That's, well, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky because I have a little bit of uh, height clearance on my you truck. You do. But with you, you probably, are you scraping? I got the little SUV. Are you scraping? No. Are you, no, you're getting lucky. You're just being a little more cautious. Yeah. Anyhow, so what I wanted to okay. ask you. Now, circle back. Now, of course, it's because I don't want to say what I want to say after this, but I'm definitely going to give you a chance. What do you want to say? What do you want to say? Just say, oh, well, say about, about the subject what do you I want to bring say? up. About the subject I want to bring up. <laughs> I know, I'm giving you a hard time. I'm giving you a hard I, time. I, I, Come on. It's completely normal. Now, now you're all serious. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure that I stay on point. That's okay. All. Okay. I, I get lost in the sauce sometimes. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think about Alex Jones? So, what do I feel about Alex Jones? Okay, so. Not not a light question. You're, you're bringing out like the heavy hit or like a, a deep deep question here. Um, yeah. That that I don't know. I I question it often. I, I wonder is he controlled opposition or is he legit? Um, you know, he brings up some amazing points, but it's a little crazy. And you know, the first time I heard him was back in 2012, and my first impression was this guy's a nut job. Like oh. th- th- this guy is sitting and screaming and yelling. And I'm like, who is this guy? And that was my first impression. But, you know, a lot of the shit that he's been saying is spot on. I mean, he's like, he's just. And I'll say a lot. Yeah, a, a lot. lot. Not all. The first time I heard about him is um, one of my favorite comedians who ever walked the face of this earth. The great Patrice O'Neill. If you get a chance, look at him. He's just fantastic. And he was on a show called Opie and Anthony. Okay, I'm a big yeah, fan. I know that I'm one. a big Opie and Anthony fan, and um, he was talking. He did an interview with Alex Jones, and he said the reason he thinks that he is so crazy and wild is because he has to. He has to seem crazy and wild. He says, "For you to get to where you are, he his analogy that he uses is that he shoves marbles in his butt." <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like so to, to to be able to reach that wider audience to get the truth out. You have to seem crazy so that they kind of like dismiss you. And I, fair enough, I, I guess. And he definitely sounds crazy. I know. I think you've done an impression of him once before, but uh, um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I got the documents right here, and uh, uh, they're looking at me right now. Oh, okay, I need to shut this down. Okay. <laughs> oh come on, come on! You ever see how you like? You, I love you do better than that. I've I, heard better. I've I, heard better. I, I love how he like eats his words at the end. He like, just. It's like it sounds like he's just chewing on a sandwich. He's like, oh, Eddie, they're, 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 Eddie, let me tell you something, Eddie. Eddie Bravo, by the way, uh, fantastic, fantastic. He, he does like to swear and cuss on here. <laughs> 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 Do you hear how he, <laughs> he eats them? That's so funny. <laughs> but I do think there was also the conspiracy theory that he was Bill Hicks. If you know who Bill Hicks is. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if you do or not. And uh, he's also state, uh, you know, uh, in Austin. Uh, this his recent case with the, which Rob will definitely not bring up. Um, yeah. uh, it has something to do with fishing in the sand, and uh, his that whatever that was that fiasco. There was the what do you make of that? 
I, there's I, so much in there, there. There's so much. There is so much. And, you know, I, yeah. And then uh, what was the, what was the Grove? Um, uh, Bohemian. Bohemian Grove. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I actually never knew it was him who had shot those, vi- that shot that video. Right. And when I found that out, I was completely surprised. I was like, what? That's Alex Jones? Um, but what you know, did it make you think that like, because the first time you've seen him, you think he's like this crazy out of control person. And then when you realize that he did that, do you think it was legit? Or did you think that he's controlled opposition? Or do you I, think they I, let I him in? I still don't know. I still think he's over the top. I really do think he's over the top still. Like, <laughs> like when I listened to, I listened to him when he was on uh, Tinfoil Hats. And great episode, by the way. But he's just, maybe he's just that much of a, of a, his personality is so much that it's just, in a way, sometimes off-putting, though. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I like it. I, I take it for the comedic value of it, too. So for me, it's a kind of a double-edged sword. Um, and that's in a positive light as well in the negative. But did you hear him talk about, uh, you know, like Project Looking Glass? No. No. Mm-hmm. Like, I know Project Looking Glass, which is um, – I'm super interested in that. That's one of my favorite ones. And who people who don't know is basically like they have clairvoyance – or mm-hmm. what's what's the other word uh, where they can like uh, precog, precognition? What, what's the one where they can put themselves in another place? Oh, uh, remote viewing. Remote viewing, and that they can, so they can change things in the present, and then look into the future and see how the outcome changes. But apparently, these people, no matter what they do now, there's a certain thing that is going to happen. An event. An event. A singularity. Whatever you want, mm-hmm. might want to call it. That no matter what they do, they can't change the outcome of the future. Therefore, they kind of shut it down, uh, and they even brought in special people to try to do this and that and the other. And he brought that up, I don't know, a couple years ago on Rogan, and I was like, "Well, what? this has been out for a while, this though." Has been so out for a while. I, I, so not. Oh yeah, that's way before that. Yeah, but. a couple years ago. So like he, you mean he brought it up a couple years ago, or did he bring it up like? Many more, like many years ago. No, this is just when I maybe became aware of it. Or okay, maybe, okay. you know, being on Rogan, you know, yeah. I'm working night shift and I'm listening to the podcast. And I was just like, what is this? And now I've heard it a couple times. And uh, it just brings credence to what he says. But like Patrice said, he shoves marbles in his ass. <laughs> that's, the, that's exactly the way well, he said it. Going to uh, Project Looking Glass. What's your thoughts on that? I don't know, man. It, is it... You think it's possible? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. You think it's like has yeah. some legs? Like, do, do you believe that it is, there's a possibility of this? Why not? You know, B, B was bringing up some things and saying some things that you will hear. That you got you have to question everything. So, not why not? Because that's a little bit like and and like she said though, like there's the you know something else which which i totally agree you know disclosure there's a uh, soft disclosure or what is that uh, soft disclosure yeah. soft disclosure or you know or you know hidden in plain sight that's what that was the way she yeah. said it yeah and yeah. you know they kind of have to show you their hand but in a subversive uh subversive uh, type, type of way so like through movies <laughs> so some of these movies that we've seen you know like not that this is project looking glass but like stargate you know mm. they're i I actually fully believe that there was a there was a Stargate. So, what do you think? This okay? When you say they, what do you mean? Hmm. Like the controlling elite, possibly as Patrick had said from uh, episode nine, nine. Uh, he was saying that it was a breakaway civilization who's in control. Mm. Um, is, is that it? I don't know. No, you know I'm thinking but, like I'm thinking like Saturn worshippers, like the people who like these like like these dark. Yeah, but 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 in all honesty, Saturn worship is out in the open too much. I actually believe that Which it's... Which makes you question... You know what I'm that, saying? Like, there's yeah, it's like, like, hey, look at over here. Pay attention. Oh, look at all these... When uh, it's something else... Like a happening. sleight of hand. Yes, yes. yes. Like, we're going to distract you. We're going to give you low-level shit. We're going to hide the high-level shit. So maybe is it something more? And again, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. But you do not think that the, that the U.S. government... Because you know they've done, you know, uh, Project Montauk and uh, what was the other one? The, yeah, which um, we talked about... Uh, what was yeah. the other one? What was the other one? The real big one? Paperclip, high no, jump. No, the one where they were like giving people LSD and all that. Oh, you know crap. which one? It's yeah. You, you, listeners out there, help me out. You know which one I'm talking about? Where they re- redo their mind? Yeah, because um, you know Ted Kaczynski just recently fucking died. Oh, did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, the 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 the, <laughs> the great Sam Tripoli, the, the Unibobber was right, <laughs> and so, then that shirt got taken down too because. Oh my God! What? Why? What? 
Why can't oh, I remember this? What I, is the what is the name of it? The the uh, the, the, the government well, project. Jeopardy class, you know, Final do, Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. Yeah. This is this is me wasting time while Rye googles it. Do, uh, do, well, we can do, talk. Do, it's do, okay. Do, I, I my, my phone is so messed up. It'll be uh, where they where they you know where they did mind control and things like that, mind experiments and all that. Whatever the name of that yeah. one is. Uh, yeah. And uh, if they're willing to do that to their own citizens, you know, put sarin gas in the in the water and LSD and, you know, cause Ted Kaczynski was part of that's why I kind of brought that up. And, uh, why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they have a project in which they reach these clairvoyant people like, you know, like, um, that Tom. Oh. Okay. Hold on, hold on, on, hold on, hold on, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news, <laughs> MK ultra, MK ultra. But there's another one actually operation midnight climax. I, I would remember if it was MLK ultra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Easier but, to remember, but Operation Midnight Climax. That that's was something the, else. That was the one. That, that was the one that Ted Kaczynski was in. I think. Really, I think so. Established in order to study the effects of LSD on non consenting yes. individuals. That was in like that was in one of those big uh, what are those, Prost- just, prostitutes on the CIA yes. payroll were instructed to lure clients back to the safe houses where there are serpentis- uh, serendipitous. No, serpentitiously. Serpentitiously. Uh, thank you. Applied with a wide range of substances, including LSD, and monitored behind one-way glass. See, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, listeners of the podcast. Proof that I helped Rye this time. He did. He did. Because <laughs> normally I'm just I just throw words out there. I, I've heard the words, but I don't know what they mean. And I just you did never, fantastic there, Tom. You thank, did fantastic. I'm, thank I'm, you. I'm, I, I, you're proud of me. I am. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, yeah. we're we're really off topic though from yeah. the what from we talked shows. about. Uh, no, shows. no, I'm saying from from our episode that's upcoming. You know. Oh yeah. So why don't we do a call to action? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, okay. Like this call. To, let's think of a different call to action because you know we ask the same thing over and over. Or you want people to pick up uh, grenades or something? Right. What do you mean? <laughs> no. no. Not jump on grenades. Um, <laughs> oh, see, you're so sweet. You're such a sweet guy. Yeah. But <laughs> maybe this time, you know. Mm. I want to see maybe a little competition. Who can invite the most people to our Facebook group? Okay. Um, now, That's interesting. what I want you to do is whoever you invite, I want them to message us and we're going to keep a tally. Okay. And, and, you know, if you get 15 people, you know, we're definitely going to give you a shout out on the, on the show. And, and if you have a story, we'll definitely feature it on the show. So this is what I want. Mm. What do you think? I was thinking, I mean, I don't know if we're there at that point yet because we're definitely not making any money with this, but eventually, like, maybe, like, a signed shirt or something. Oh, well, yeah. That but, would be cool with, like, our, our big dumb heads on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, like a but, thumbs but up that, me that'll, and, be, that'll be in the future when we actually start making some money and have merch because we don't have that right now. So, so. it was hence the call to action so we could get there later, then we do exactly. another Exactly. Let, let's build uh, up the population yeah, that like is the Lost Frequency uh, yeah. uh, Listeners. See, therefore, as you can see, I'm not very business savvy. You're not there yet. No, no, no. no you, you're you're jumping the gun. As no, you would no. say, you're jumping the gun. I, I might be creative, but I'm not business savvy. <laughs> I'm not business savvy. So, this is our call to action: invite friends, family, coworkers to the Lost Frequency Podcast Facebook group. Get them to say, "Hey, Joe invited me." And, oh, there you go. Yeah, and we will keep a tally, and whoever comes out on top, well. We're going to give you a little bit of a prize, the best prize we can get, which is just a, sh- a shout out saying, you did awesome, man. Thank you. And we'll feature you as an expert within the group. So. Sounds great to me. I mean, am I a group expert? Yeah, of, of course you are. You're, admitted, you're an admin. In I'm the, an admin. That's different. That, 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 that's like. You, what, can, you know what? You can I don't do, know that it's God, God here, powers. Let, but let me tell you, you can, you can make yourself a group expert. I don't know how to do all that stuff. Yeah, I think I, I already did, though. Yeah, you do a lot of stuff for me, right? And um, I don't. I don't. <laughs> But I, I make you laugh, so I think it's even Steven. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we really appreciate you all. Um, once again, send those stories to us at the Lost Frequency Podcast of uh, gmail.com. Contact me. All the normal stuff, you know, uh, over Facebook, go on our groups, and all the above. And remember, you're listening to the Lost Frequency Podcast, where we bring the periphery into focus. All right, we're here with the uh, Lost Frequency Podcast, and today's guest is B Moss. 
B Moss, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you and a little bit about yourself? Hey, everybody. Y'all can find me on Facebook at Crypto Normal Encounters with B Moss Facebook group and Crypto Normal Encounters with B Moss on YouTube. That's my YouTube channel also. Um, and basically, um, I am. If you Google me and look me up, they have me down as a dog man researcher. I don't consider myself that, but I consider myself more along the lines of a dog man eyewitness. Um, I guess maybe if you want to look at it as investigator, I would probably say I'm more like an investigative reporter in this, um, a podcaster who, because of my encounters uh, and listening to several other shows and encounters over the years and being contacted by different eyewitnesses um, such as myself, I basically started my own channel um, on YouTube and my own group because of that to, to reach out to other people who've also had the same experiences or similar experiences because people need um, an avenue or a platform to be able to come somewhere and talk comfortably without feeling that they're going to be ridiculed with other like-minded people. So so that's what I'm doing. Um, I interview eyewitnesses about their dogmen and Bigfoot and paranormal experiences. That's, that's what we do here too, uh, B. We, um, we want to create an environment in which people feel comfortable to tell what they want to tell and maybe connect with other people. And so they feel like they're not alone. And so, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. So uh, it's yeah. and really then, fortuitous and that like we I say, ran into you. So, yeah. And like I say, it's like, we, we don't want to question that you had the experience. We just want to question, you know, have questions about your experience. That, that's what we, you know, we don't question the actual experience. We question, we have questions about it. We want to learn more and hear more um, about your experiences. Absolutely. And I don't mind sharing that with you guys. Let me do this real quick. Um, so basically, my first encounter, did you want me to go into my first encounter first? 100%. Sure, yeah, whatever, sure. whatever makes you comfortable. Okay, so, all right. So basically, um, I already knew about Dogman um, because I was a, as we all started out, like when it came to cryptids, most people knew about Bigfoot first. Um, dog man that kind of has gotten popularity. I don't know when it actually got started. I'm going to say within the last five to 10 years or, or so that it's really taken off. Um, I was listening to a lot of shows like Vic Condiff show dog man encounters and several other, um, cryptid shows that were talking about dog man and brought, you know, I, I actually originally when I first heard about it, I thought it was a joke. I was like, really? People are reaching now because it's bad enough that there's Bigfoot out there, but now a dog, man, a werewolf is out there, really? And so the more I started listening to people's encounters, I started listening, and then you could hear the, the fear in their voice or the pain, and you could feel different things from them that you know, okay, this is not somebody that's making this story up. You could just, you could feel it. You could feel the emotion coming from them tell their encounter. But the more I listened to them, and I listened to those encounters for several years, but I never thought that I would actually see a dog man myself. I just liked to listen to the stories. But because I had listened to so much about dog man the night that I actually had my first encounter, I actually I already knew a lot of the things that um, that people said about them, like the way they looked, um, all that kind of stuff. So I wasn't, I wasn't like a person, and I'll get right into it, but I wasn't a person seeing a dog man for the first time that had absolutely no idea what I was looking at. So, 2013, November 2013, uh, the week before Thanksgiving, uh, it was a weekend, and um, I can't say if it was a Friday or Saturday night. I just know it was a weekend the night before, the week before Thanksgiving. I'm pulling up to my parents' house. I'm kind of leaving some stuff out there. It was hunting hunting season I think starts in like October or something like that I was married at the time and my husband who I was married to he would be gone for three or four days sometimes on these hunting trips and so instead of staying at home all weekend alone I, I would say okay come on Chloe my little Yorkie I had at the time and I would take her with me we'd go visit my parents for the weekend and just stay there for three or four for two to two or three days for the weekend so my parents' house, the way that their driveway is set up, they have a lattice carport. Um, 
and an extended driveway on the side. So all three of their vehicles are already parked in the driveway. Um, and the driveway is at an incline, and that'll be important later. But whenever I come over their house, they, there's no... They, and they live in a cul-de-sac, and I know it's kind of hard because I'm, I don't have everything written out like in what order. So I, I didn't give you all the layout of the land. So the layout of the land, um, when you come pull off the main highway and turn into their neighborhood. They lived in a cul-de-sac. It was a dead end on that end of the neighborhood. So directly behind their backyard is a field. And that field is sometimes a cotton field, sometimes it's a corn field, sometimes it's a soybean field. I guess they just rotate out the crops. Border Directly bordering and boxing in that field is the wood line and that wood line comes all the way it comes all the way up around the field and comes right right to a pathway that leads into the woods so there's woods and there's a trail that leads into those woods and then there's deeper woods all the way back now on this night that I pull into the neighborhood I parked on this <clears throat> elm tree that is like right in at the end of their yard like next to the sidewalk um, where I would park sometimes with, like, if Dad wasn't, if all the cars were there, then I'd just park down there on the street. So I'm parked facing the trail that I was just telling you about. I didn't turn my car off that night. I pull up. I gathered my things that I had um, on the passenger side floor and off the passenger seat and all that kind of stuff. Everything that I could gather from inside of the car before I got out to go into their house because on the end of the neighborhood that they lived on, or just period. If nobody had their head li or their floodlights on or their house lights on, then it was really dark out there. So on this night, I just grabbed everything I could from inside the car while I was in the car. And I had planned on getting out after the fact to get my suitcase out of the back. The reason that I didn't want to just get out, I'd never seen anything before. And I don't know if this is like divine intervention or um, I don't know why I did that because I didn't always do that. I would get out usually and just make it easier on myself by getting out and just getting stuff. But on this night, I didn't do that. Um, I pulled up next to that curb. I did not park right away like I would normally do. I parked, but I didn't turn the headlights off. The headlights are still on. And as I told y'all before, directly straight ahead in front of me, there's a trail that leads into the woods. I've been back there before as a kid, but like as an adult, I had never gone back there again. You know, I never thought about it. But so after I finally gathered everything that I gathered off of um, the passenger seat in the floor, I look up because I'm getting ready to put the car, um, turn the key in the ignition, turn the car off. But when I looked back up from everything I was doing, I looked straight ahead and I thought to myself, I know that's not what I think it is. When I said that, you know, I, you know, I thought my mind might be playing tricks on me. And so I said, let me just check. So I turned the high beams on. When I turned the high beams on, I'm going to tell you what I saw. Like, But I turned the high beams on. And when I turned the high beams on, my worst fears in that moment were confirmed. Like I'm looking at a dog, man. I'm looking at a werewolf right now. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And I like right now, y'all see me and y'all talking to me and like I'm I don't seem afraid or terrified. I don't, I, I've never had that experience with them. So, to, but I'm still afraid because that you're still looking at a werewolf or a dog man. It's still not something that you naturally see every day. So in that moment, and I, I kind of got ahead of myself there because what I saw before I turned the high beams on, so I had the low beams on. What I first initially saw when I looked up, I saw something blacker than black standing on that trail. Like it, I couldn't tell like if it was facing forward or back. I didn't know. I just thought there's something there, and I'm not sure what to make of it. Um, there's something standing there, but I'm not going to jump to conclusions. But I'm seeing something. It's jet black, and it's tall. It's on two feet, whatever it is, if it's something. When I put the high beams on it, I look, and... This thing was a, a dog man, eight and a half, nine feet tall, jet black, blacker than black, blacker than the darkness. And the crazy part about that was that I just told y'all, like, there's no street lights on that end of the neighborhood. 
So with that being said, how is this thing blacker than that? How is it blacker than the darkness of the night? You understand? Right. You can still see it. So, yeah. Yeah. It was black. And so now maybe I could see it maybe because of the headlights. But, and I say this on all the shows, on all the interviews that I've been on, when it comes to the car that I have or had at the time, 2008 Cadillac CTS, if y'all know anything about those cars, their headlights are garbage. They're garbage. They're not very bright at all. Um, they're, the car already sits low to the ground, so the headlights are garbage. And so if you're driving down a back road, you're going to have to use the high beams or order some special lights to have better lights for your Cadillac. Garbage. So some people have asked me, and I'm going to go into the description, how do I know? Well, I'll go to the eyes in a few minutes. Let me keep this in perspective. So I'm looking at this thing. It's jet black. It's about eight and a half, nine feet tall. Its back is to me initially. And it stayed that way as long as the low beams were on. When I put the high beams on it, um, it slowly turned around and looked into the windshield, into the driver's seat, and straight into my eyes. And I could not believe this. Y'all know like a regular animal is going to look at the car but it's not going to know to look directly into the windshield and look to, look at you. Like knowing that a person is actually sitting there, it's almost like that they, they're, they're more intelligent. They're, they're, I can't even explain it, but it knew. Yeah, even a predator like a wolf wouldn't even do that. Absolutely. Oh, no. Now, if you got a dog that walks up to your car. And, that, and you didn't have any interior lights on, did you? I probably did. I don't know, but I'm going to say I probably did. I would have had to because I had a lot of stuff to gather. I had to gather my get my makeup box and all the other crap that I had on the front seat. So I'm going to say probably did. But in that moment, when I put the high beams on it, the thing slowly turned around to face me. It looked straight into the windshield. looks at me. We keep an eye contact for eight and a half to nine seconds. Now, before I go into that, um, I'm going to tell y'all what it looked like. This thing is jet black. It's eight and a half, nine feet tall. Um, it didn't look like the black German Shepherd or Anubis type dog man that everybody talks about. And it didn't have those golden amber luminescent eyes. It had luminescent eyes, but they weren't that yellow amber color. And it didn't look like the German Shepherd type. This one, had, and I did see that one like that later, but this one on this encounter had more of a broad Rottweiler pit bull type head you know the broad head like mastiff rottweiler pit bull it had that it didn't have the elongated snout it had the shorter snout like those dogs the mastiff pit bull rottweiler it had more of the crop style ears the upper body was like the upper body of a bodybuilder um on steroids um it had you could see the pecs you could see the abs um you could see the i could see the tapered waist the arms were long. Um, I don't remember. I wasn't paying attention to the claws or anything like that, but I saw this thing from head to toe. It had that tapered waist. You could see the hog style legs. You could see the thighs. Everything was massive on this creature. It had the, um, I don't know what you call the, um, it didn't have the human style feet like some people, like you don't hear that type too often, but some dog men, they say that have a human style feet. It didn't have that. It had, um, the foot style where the heel is off the ground. Do you y'all know what I'm what I mean by that? Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, like, like a dog. Yeah. Kind of like more yeah. like on Yeah, a how long dog. how long was the hair? How long was the hair? Was it short like a Rottweiler too? It was Yeah, it wasn't it didn't have flowing hair on it. It was just um what do you call it? Like I guess like you a Rottweiler or a pit bull, it just it just had that black fur, but it wasn't it was just what would you call that? A short coat? Just imagine a Rottweiler. Yeah, I would say a short coat or something. But yeah, it was like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's my favorite dog. That's what. That's the type head it had. If I had to compare it to a regular dog, um, it didn't have the amber eyes. The eyes were a luminescent blue. Um, Whoa. Luminescent blue and the blue that it like a husky kind of like kind of like almost a husky. You know that blue eye color that um not the blue eye color but the, the those beautiful tropical island blue ocean um pictures that 
but then make it luminescent. So like a turquoise blue, but shining and glowing from within. The headlight, people ask, well, how do you know that it wasn't um, the headlights or eyes, eyes shine from the headlights? Because for one, like I said, my car sits low. The headlights are garbage. And three, this thing's head towers way above where the headlights would have hit anyway. This thing is standing eight and a half, nine feet tall. So the headlights would have been probably mid-waist area or something like that, if I had just had to guess. So, B, how are you feeling when you see this? Like, I've never, this is the first time I've ever heard a dog man who looked like this. What were you feeling? What was going through you when you, when you seen this? When I saw this, I, my first initial thought was, um, I had, first of all, like I had a, a tear immediately started, you know, falling down my face after I saw this because, um, you know, my worst fears are confirmed. Like, oh my God, like I'm looking at a dog man right now. My second thought was um, shock and awe because at the same time, like, you know how you're excited and you're scared at the same time? Like, oh, I, I'm really looking at this right now. Like, and at the same time, I'm out here by myself in the car right now and there's nobody else outside. Um, and at this, it's so many thoughts going through my head all at one time. I couldn't believe I was looking at this. And so I just, so it sounds weird because I'm a podcaster and I do this now, but so when I talk about it, I'm talking about it from a different angle, but that thing could have hurt me if it wanted to, but I was in the car also. Now, so I had several different feelings going on. It didn't give off fear. It didn't, um, it didn't snarl at me. It didn't bare its teeth at me or anything like that. I'm not, I haven't given y'all how far this thing was away. Um, so just so you don't think it's standing right there in front of the car, it's so from where I'm parked at. And like I've told people on several shows, I'm not good at gauging distance, but I've gone back there, you know, after the fact or whatever and parked in that exact same spot. So if I were to have gotten out of the car that night and took <clears throat> anywhere between 60 to 70, 80 steps, depending on how fast you're walking, 60 to 70 steps, we'll say, then that's how close it was to me that night. And I think somebody said that was like 25 yards or something like that. A step is about, if you take a big step, that's, well, I. It's about a yard. Yeah, it's about a yard. So if you're taking, yeah, something like that. Like, something like that. I would say closer to like 50 yards or something. Because I'm 5'2 I'm okay. five two and I'm short. So I got short <laughs> legs. I'm 6'3. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it took me like 60 steps. I, I, have, a, I have a question. Uh huh. I have a question about the legs. Um, were they like the reverse knee? Um, if you remember, if you recall, like, you know, they how the dogs have the reverse, like the backwards uh, knee. Do you recall that? Um, when you say the back, people call it the backwards knee, but it's not backwards. It's like uh, if you take your dog. It's the ankle. And, yeah. Well you, it's, it's the ankle. Well, is it? It's the knee, but it's kind of, it, I guess it's not backwards, but it's kind of like extends further like this, right? Kind of thing, almost in a way. Stand your dog up on your on your dog's hind legs, and it's rounded in the front, right? And then it comes down. Yeah, yeah, like a woman wearing a high heel shoe. It's like that, like with your dog's legs. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it was. So when it comes to that, um, some people ask me when it had its back to me. Did it have a tail? I don't remember seeing a tail. And if some people be like, well, how could you not see it? Because I wasn't focused on the tail. Because once that thing turned and looked at me, it kept gaze with me from eight to ten seconds. We had eye contact for eight to ten seconds, and in my mind at that time, when it's when it turned around to look at me, um, and we had that eye contact, I'm thinking in my head, and I always say I can't remember if I said this out loud or if I thought it in my head, but what I, what was said by me was. Oh my God, please don't let that thing walk over here because this will be one of those times that my automatic car doors did not lock because sometimes they wouldn't. And when I said that, and this will be one of the one and only time, maybe the first time of two times, if mind speak did happen with Dog Man, then it happened in that moment because when I said that, the next thing I heard was, Oh, it's just you. No big deal. And it casually turned its back on me. That is the one and only time. 
that I can say, because I've heard people tell me that on shows a lot of the time about, like, you know, them speaking to them, especially Bigfoot. I don't, you don't hear that too often as far as Dogman, but I've heard some. But yeah, um, in that moment, it's like, it's, I don't know if it was speaking to my fear to make me feel better, but I don't think that's what it was. I think what it was is that that Dogman, when I first saw it, when the low beams were on it, it was remaining completely still, not moving at all. At all. So I think what in that moment, so I think what was happening in its mind, and I can't read its mind, but I think what was happening in that moment was that since that neighborhood, since that where they live at is on a cul-de-sac, they, I think they watch the surroundings. They think they watch the people. They watch the area. They know who, what time people are in for the night and not coming back out. That thing I was probably getting ready to go on the hunt or whatever it was getting ready to go do, and I caught it by surprise. I just so happened to pull up at that moment when it was getting ready to head back there into the woods. And, and, it, did, and it didn't expect you. It didn't expect you because you don't normally come there. So it was like, who? Who are you? And it's trying to assess as whether or not you're a danger. Well, um, so... Basically, what was going on at that moment, I think it remained completely still. I think it probably is used to seeing people and when they drive up in a car, after a few minutes, they're going to cut the headlights off. I'm black enough. I'm dark enough. They'll never see me. I didn't do that. So when I put the high beam, so as long as the low beams were on, it stayed completely still. It didn't turn around until the high beams were on it, which to me at that moment meant, Oh crap, I'm spotlighted now. Let me turn around and see who this is behind me. And so that's what that was answering. I don't even think it was really answering me so much, but I still heard what was projected to me was, oh, it's just you. No big deal. It the thing never went down on all fours. It stayed on two feet. And once it saw me and saw who I was, whether this thing had seen me because my parents moved in that house in 1985 and they didn't move out into 2019. So if it had been on that property all those years or if times had seen me there before, it's been watching from the trees when I've been outside smoking, I don't know. But it knew who I was and it wasn't worried about me. Oh, you're no threat. It casually turned around at that moment. Yeah, it casually turned around to show me. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, oh, oh, it's just you. You know, it, it's like, oh, it's just you. Like it recognizes you. You only see yeah. that if you recognize someone or if you know someone. Oh, it's just you. No big deal. You know, like someone walks through the door, someone walks through the door and you're like, oh, who is that? Oh, it's just you. No big deal. It, it, it's it's a recognition. Yes. It, it, that's the way I was thinking. It, it feels like this. Well, the way you said it to me, it sounds like it's like a recognition. Oh, you're not. You know, it's just it's you. I don't have nothing to worry about. I'm going to go on my way. Then. Exactly. And it didn't run off. It turned around casual, casually and comfortably as if. You know, like you're at home and you, your your wife has uh, just come home or whatever. And you hear the you're in the bathroom or whatever shaving. You hear the front door open and you like, oh crap, let me go see that. You peek out, look around the corner. Oh, it's just you know, big deal. You go back to doing what you were doing. This thing had that type of attitude. It turned and casually walked on two feet and went headed on its original path. I think where it was already going in the first place. So. That night was my very first encounter, and after that, that's what got me to start. Um, I decided for myself in that very moment, that's not an isolated event. If there's one back there, there's more. This is not isolated. So after that, I just said, I'm going to start taking pictures. I started taking pictures, recording videos and stuff like that on a regular basis, started paying attention to my surroundings, because I was always outside smoking when I'd be over there. So because of that... Maybe because of my knowledge and I know about these things, I know that people say that they hide in the, what do you call it, the, the crotch of the tree or whatever, like, you know, when there's a split in the tree or, or out from the Yeah. They like to hide behind that. They like to hide in areas where there is, there's a lot of tree cover. They're really good at blending in with that. And right behind their house, like, that wood line comes up all the way to the front of that field. So, um... So that... That's uh, to, mm -hmm. to get back to the thing where he's like, oh, it's just you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it kind of creep you out? Because you're thinking, how often has this thing been seeing me? How often has it been like looking at me 
How often, you know what I mean? If it's recognizing How long has me, it been around? How long has it been around? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, th- have your parents seen anything like this? Has your parents seen anything like this or any signs or anything? They think it's ridiculous. They don't believe in anything. I, I, and I, I've, I've had arguments with them about this before. Um, that they don't believe in this at all. Um, I don't know if they kind of halfway somewhat believe in me now, but I still don't think so. But just... Um, over the weekend or whatever, or actually yesterday at the funeral, um, I was glad that my mother asked my uncle a question. Another great uncle had just just passed. But she asked that great uncle's brother, who was also my great uncle, she asked him, she said, I remember that time that Joe, and I'm just kind of diverting, but this is important to bring up, and I think this might have halfway opened them up to make them a believer in other things, she said, I remember that. She was telling Tim, she said, I remember that time that Joe told me and Paul, which is my father, um, about the time when y'all were kids and you were out there in the cornfield and y'all saw a snake stand up on two feet and take off running. And Tim, just matter of factly, said, yeah, that did happen. He said, we really saw that. Now, Tim uh, I'm going to say Tim's about 68, 69 years old, and the, my uncle that just passed, he was 75. And all the way up from, I guess, however many years ago he told my mom that to up until like a few years ago, uh, he was still saying, yeah, they saw that. And so for me in that moment, standing there at, at the, the repast, like after the funeral was over with, and hearing my other uncle like say, yeah, that really happened. In my mind at that moment, I'm like, reptilian um they said it ran off on two feet and i said and my dad said he said you know joe uh he's never been a type of person that would ever lie he's always been a type of person that if he say he saw something he saw something i said okay well i'm your daughter and i'm telling you there's other things out there because and then he my dad brought up well you know the bible said that the snakes used to have Legs at one point, regardless, um, you need to understand, even if snakes or the serpent had legs at one point, that's still a reptilian. That's still a reptilian. So you just have to understand, there's a lot of different aspects to this. Um, but no, they never saw anything. They never believed it. They never came out to look. But that night when that incident happened, after that, thank God I didn't get out of the car that night. What if I got out and been lollygagging around, just got out to go get the stuff in front seat and then the back seat. And, you know, then sometimes my parents' screen door would be locked. If the screen door was locked, I'd have to stand out there for a while until they came and unlocked it because I can't just th- put the key in the door. The screen door's locked. But there's many times throughout the years that I would come over there at 8, 9, 10 o'clock um, at night and... um, Hold on, I'm sorry. Many times... At night, there would be plenty of times that sometimes I would show up eight, nine o'clock, and if my parents didn't think I was still coming over, then dad would always lock that screen door. But even though as dark as it was, I didn't know about dog men yet. I would stand out there and be comfortable, not worried about anything. If anything comes out as a fox, a raccoon, possum, or something like that, but never fearful or worried. I could have just easily sat down on the carport and been fine. But after that, you know, it made me think, oh, my God, like all those years you were at the door and those things were probably back there all that time, you know? Right. So that yeah, was right. just definitely, definitely. There's. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you never and to go back B, you were saying that you felt I should not get out of the car right now. Is that before you seen it before you seen the silhouette or however you would say? I don't even think I don't even think it was a thing of feeling like I should. I don't, I'm saying like, I don't, I didn't think about it. It was more like. You were just taking, you were doing a different routine. You, you, for some reason, were doing things differently than you normally do. And it was, yeah, it just happened naturally almost. Wow. Yeah. Almost maybe like divine intervention or a guardian angel knew it was going to happen. So it, it stalled me and made, cause I usually would have pulled right. Up. Y'all know, like when you pull up to wherever your destination is, you cut the car off. I didn't do any of that that night. I didn't do any of that that night. Everything was still on. And I, I, you know what? But the thing also about it was I 
think that I was supposed to see that. I don't think it meant for me to see it, but I was meant to see that in that moment. Because after that, and I wasn't the only one who did see see it. Not well, I was the only one who saw that one. There were there were other encounters. Um I had several other encounters after that, or sightings. That was an encounter where it was full body. My nephew had an encounter years later also, and um he called, he got off from work at McDonald's one night. Um it was like midnight and um, again, it's another one of those weekends and I'm there. He calls, he's sitting out there. You know how teenagers do? They're sitting out in their car, cars on, whatever, running, texting and just, you know, the, they're not thinking about anything and not paying attention to their surroundings or anything like that. And he was blowing my phone up and I answered the phone and he, this is at their house, my parents' house too. Um, he, yeah, this is another incident there. He called inside, frantic. He's 16 years old. Tina, come out here real quick. I said, what's wrong? What is it? He said, there's a dog man out here right now. He's, I said, are you serious? I said, you, I said, I swear to God, he was crying. I swear to God. I said, what is it doing? He said, it's standing up. He's, he said it started off on all fours, and then it turned around. And when it, um, he said it turned around, and then it stood up. And so I rushed to the, the front of the house. That particular week, I know I didn't. I did come to the front of the house, but my ex-husband that particular weekend just so happened to be there at the house, too, with my, me and my parents because he was going to be hunting in that area. So he stayed there that weekend also. So I had him to walk out there and escort my nephew in because if I had to, then I just I would have went. But since he was there, it's like, no, you go because I'm, I'm terrified. I know he's telling the truth. And so he went out there and got him, and he came in, and, he, and my nephew was still terrified and traumatized about it after the fact. When I talked to him after he came in the house, but he was serious about that. Did you see a similar one or, or a different? Did, did he like describe it to you? Is it similar? Or? He said it had a long snout. I think it was in that same exact spot. So... I don't know. He, you know, like he's a teenager. He's not paying attention to it the same way I am. So he did say it was black. It was tall. Um, I kind of remember him saying this one had a tail, though. The one I saw, I don't remember if it had a tail or not because I wasn't focused on that. But he said that it had long ears and he said it had a long at its snout. So I guess he saw a different type than what I saw. But the one, but the type he saw, it's probably easier to see the tail too because it's easier to see the tail as well because he's on all fours. And before it stood up, it was probably easier to see. Maybe it was sticking up or something. So that would make sense. And not only that, Keyshawn was parked. So I'm parked. However many, however far I told y'all away, I'm parked further back by the tree. Like not as so he's parked several more feet forward or whatever than I was. So he's way closer to the wood line. He's way closer to that trail. So there's, so now I don't know if y'all want to go into theories on these things, or if you want me to go into um, my thoughts or really more. I'm interested in theories. 100%. I'm interested in theories. You know what? I think that's what we're trying to all do. We're trying to, you know, well, most of us are trying to do is figure out, get as much information, hear everyone's theories, you know, like there's no right or wrong answer. I think, um, so there's a lot of thought process when it comes to um, Bigfoot and Dogman. Um, I've never seen Bigfoot. I've only seen Dogman. So I can only speak on that. But what I will say, um, as far as that's concerned, is that my theories are based on my experiences. Um, people talk about them cloaking. I've seen them cloak. I've seen um, what I like to call the predator effect. Um, I've seen them cloak as far as like blending in the same way you would see a chameleon or something like that blending into trees. There's several different things that they do that's not like other natural animals do. And so you're in trying to figure stuff out, you have to put like all the all the different factors and common denominators and stuff like that together in order to be able to try to figure out what is going on with this to try to make it make sense. Um, so when you look at all these things, there's times that I've actually been recording and um, 
taking pictures and stuff like that, there's where you might see at some point where you're looking at the head, the shoulders, and the upper body, but then there's leaves and branches and stuff like that going across the stomach or the waist area. And then below that, there's like an opening down there where you should be able to see the legs and there's nothing there. So then is this paranormal? Is this a supernatural creature? Is this thing able to um, manifest in real time? Is this interdimensional? Is it is it coming through a portal right now? Like, why can I not see the rest of the body? Or even being able to, if at times, like, people who go out in the woods, and I, I, I didn't go out into the woods. I did later. But there's been times when I was standing right there next to the house under the carport recording straight ahead because I see a dog, man. Like, this is not the first. This is not the same encounter. I'm telling you another one. Looking at one, like, standing there, and I don't know why, but they were bold when it came to me. They weren't worried about me. They, I don't know. It's almost like. I don't know if I was an enigma to them or what, but they like to watch me too. Now, this one it was a black German shepherd type, I guess. Like the point, I, the long day it's not, I have a picture of this one. I have a picture of about five, six different ones. Um, but this one looked like a Nubin. Whoa. Yeah. Video too. Good one. Not, not blob squatch. Not blob squatch stuff. No, no, could you, could <laughs> not, you, not blobs, not blob squatch. Oh, no. yes. you, are you keeping those for a book or are you are you sharing it with people and show like look at this? I used to share them in the group and stuff like that, but you know, like and I'm not being disrespectful, but like there's a lot of idiots in groups. And I, I'm not I'm not attacking <laughs> members and stuff like that. The respectful members and eyewitnesses and stuff like that, y'all know who y'all are. Y'all understand, like when it comes to this stuff. There's some know-it-alls and there's people who think that they just know everything who've never seen anything before. And you're expecting a lot of the times a Hollywood version of a picture when you get these things. And what people are not looking at, think about all the professional researchers that you have out there. If the professional researchers and investigators with better quality cameras, because they're not just only using their phones when they go out on investigations and the pictures are showing up blurry, um then you have to take into account at that point. You're getting some of the same interference that you get when you have a ghost hunter or a paranormal investigator going out into the field and they go out there and all of a sudden the camera stop stop working or the batteries drain and die um, or you get... The batteries drain, right. Absolutely. So when it comes to that, then you got times like when there's stuff that appears and disappears. People have reported dog man that was there one minute and gone the next. Like, I'm not talking about running away, like actually disappearing. So when you look at stuff like that, there's so many different aspects of this that make you question it. Um, it's it's a, it's huge. That's why I say, for me, whether they're flesh and blood or not, I feel personally that they're uh, flesh and blood and supernatural or paranormal at the same time. Um, I can't make sense of it. We don't know all that there is to know about this world, but I, I will say that we know that in plenty of encounters, you see or you hear people talk about the fact, and I'm sure y'all have heard some of these um, titles, I killed a dog man, or I, they shot a dog man and blood actually dropped to the ground, or they walked up on a dog man eating something, or roadkill, or something like that, or different stuff like that. So, that's saying flesh and blood if something can be killed. But then you got the times when something is able to mind speak, something that knows how to open car doors and go in people's houses and go into people. They've gone into people's houses. Um, luring, knocking, tapping on people's windows, throwing rocks, they put... We had a guest on his name. His name was Jason, and he was in his trailer on a campground. And the Bigfoot was tapping on the outside of his trailer, and then all of a sudden, the door was open, but it didn't open, and it was inside, like going through like his his stuff. Yeah, it, and it, it just it happened. Was like, uh, yeah, no, no, the door didn't open. It was yeah, it was touching. It, it, it was it was touching the door, and then all of a sudden, it, it was inside the trailer. And he's like, "There's no way it could have gone through the door," but. It's in my trailer now, which is, you know, telling you it's kind of like this interdimensional type of being where it can just like similarity between dog yes. man and that. I, I, yeah. 
That's funny that you mentioned that. Um, you said that his trailer door wasn't open, like, and it, but but yet it was in there. It was inside. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And what's funny about that? Dark Waters has talked about that before. And Dark Waters, um, I don't know, you, y'all may not be familiar. I'm not sure, but Dark Waters had said before that a lot of time when you get into either dogman research, when you start looking into stuff, a lot of the times, sometimes you will make stuff. And I'm not saying it's like a tulpa. Some people might look at it like that. But he said that people who've had encounters will start having dreams about these things, and I've had multiple dreams about them. Um, or you will start having incidents where they actually start manifesting in your home. Um, are y'all familiar with Scott Carpenter? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm familiar not. with John Carpenter. <laughs> 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 the horror movie director, yeah, which, which might have a tie-in with this in a way. <laughs> oh yeah, because it is hard because there's people who've been killed by these things. They flipped people's cars yes. and caused people to have wrecks and stuff like that. Um, and then here in the last few years, there's a lot of unknown canine attacks, like in Cock County, Tennessee. Last yeah, last year, um, on the same road, one lady. One man got killed in April. The lady got killed in July. On the same road, not far from that, this particular address that they had given out for this, but the man neighbor saw him, I can't remember, around 9 o'clock at night. or six, I can't remember. Whatever time it was at night that he saw Tony Irons, his neighbor, whatever time it was that he saw him out there, three hours later he found his body partially eaten partially eaten and there was other strength now i have the autopsy report for both tony arns and amber miller now amber miller hers was enough to make you say oh god like that is the worst crap this is the worst this is the worst uh thing i've ever heard like this lady was missing 45 percent of her flesh wow She had 15-inch bite marks that went around from her upper front torso, upper thigh area, all the way around to the buttocks. What has a mouth that big? I mean, it's in the autopsy report. I got it in there right now. Not only that, um, at the hospital... And on the police report, and if y'all pull this up, pull up Cock County, Tennessee report from last year, um, Amber Miller, Tony Arns. When you pull it up, you're going to hear some of the craziest stuff you ever heard. At the hospital, Amber Miller had so many wounds on her body that they lost count. So many wounds on her body that they lost count. They didn't say wounds. They said lacerations. They didn't say bite marks. Lacerations. Lacerations means cuts. The, your, there's bite marks too, but lacerations, is that not claws? Right, is that exactly. not, that sounds like something's cutting you up. Matter of fact, like when it comes to this. Like these podcasts might be, I'm sorry, go ahead. these podcasts might be entertaining and, and for a certain amount because we do like some people like horror. But I mean, if the, if this, it's really like. Horror movies coming to reality. Yeah, when you said John Carpenter, you it's, weren't far off. Uh, I guess man. I was this like a is, premonition to what yeah. was going on. That is the most disturbing. Maybe you can send that to me. I'd love to look into that. Because that is that is crazy to me. I will. Um, because you talking about the autopsy report? Yes. Okay. So. Yes, yes, yes. But yes be, sure. This was sent to me. I know this is official. Um, this was sent to me by um, Jody Cook of the North American Dogman Project. He sent it to me not long after the incident. So it goes on. Now, Tony Orange's report, his is bad, but it's nowhere near like hers. Um, hers is terrifying. All Both of them are. But just the fact that these two incidents happen. Now, not only... Not just only what I told y'all about her injuries. Another thing that was crazy about that situation was the fact that um, they put, when that whole case, I don't know if it went to trial or whatever, they put the hospital staff, the police staff, the paramedics, and everybody that had anything to do with that case on a gag order. A gag order. And it's still considered an open case even now. 
who does why would they absolutely do that? why would they do that yeah there, there's a reason why they do something like that yeah i guess they don't want to promulgate fear i don't know what would be the reason for that i guess the, because they're okay they're trying to hide it because of something they can't explain or maybe it is something they can't explain and they're trying something to hide they can't it. explain now guess what though the thing about it is that in both cases of these people's death, in both cases, it was blamed on dogs. But no flesh from either one of their bodies was found in any of the dogs at all, period. And then, so, then when it came down to, there's code words when it comes down to this. Now, just like right now, I'm looking at the autopsy for Amber Miller, cause of death, suspected cause of death, unknown other. Now, she continued to live for like a week three or four days to a week after the incident now what What? oh yeah like but she ended up so she was alive she was alive with well she was in the hospital now she 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 got taken to the hospital but it wasn't by the police as in a a bystander somebody driving by in a pickup truck actually saw her out i guess on the street after she'd been attacked but her her clothes were completely removed from her body they blamed this on dogs she's naked from head to toe and her now get this this is what y'all about to hear right now like this has actually been covered on other shows so it's not anything that's going to be to the point where it's nothing that can't be shared on on the radio this made public news now that worst injury of, of all is the fact that her when she was found or when she got to the hospital they were afraid to do surgery to try to reconnect her arms because her arms, both arms, were ripped out at the socket from the shoulder and dangling. Oh, my God. Dangling. I'm never going to Tennessee, dog. (laughs) I'm never going. Now, this is in Cobb County, Tennessee. Well, don't go to Knoxville. (laughs) Period. I think this is it. Don't go to Knoxville. Not in the woods, anyway. That this wasn't in the woods. This is in the neighborhood. That is so. This, this is, is is this just like a regular neighborhood, like like in urban Knoxville or Cottonwood? Um, Jimtown Road is the name of the road where she was killed. I circled some of the worst stuff on here. The so number nine on the. The autopsy report is real long. It's got, on this autopsy report, just for her alone, it's got 13 different, it's trying to go over all the all the injuries, but from what I heard, this is not even everything. Now, this number nine on here says the front and lateral, that's the front and side aspect of the right arm and forearm, along with the elbow region. Do you hear how much of the arm that is? Along with the elbow yeah. region, demonstrate a large muscle deep extensive trauma with subsequent debridement of the necrotic dead tissue, which is approximately 13 and a half inches long and up to five inches long in the circumference. So it goes on to like basically go over this wound, how big it is. Number 10, the upper left extremity, that's the upper left arm has been amputated. The amputated right shoulder leaves an open wound, which is loosely approximated with surgical strings and measures eight by three inches. Um, there's a lot of stuff on here. There's a lot of stuff on here. It's, it's, I believe that's enough. And uh, um, is, is there family, uh, Amber's family? I think her name was Amber. Is this correct? Amber's family. Um, are, there, are they looking for answers? Is this like, you know, like what we're she doing? She said right it was now? still an open case. Still so. an open case. So it's uh, like their family's like, let's find out what's going on. Because this is crazy. They were told that it was dogs. Well, everybody's like, but there's the guys who have actually come out after the fact that are now. Um, there's a guy who's from that same town that uh, they live in that came out on a show not too long ago. And I can't, I don't remember which show because I've watched so many. But it came out not too long ago and he was actually telling, um, he actually was telling, um, Telling the podcaster who was interviewing him that uh, that that was a BS story and about what was put out in the news, they, they covered so much. But the whole thing about it being dogs, those dogs weren't even were not oh. even put down. And they, tr- it's a whole lot yeah, of stuff. Y'all sure. going to pull that up on YouTube. But um, that is one. Now I will say this: what I did find out though was that 
um, from what I heard, and I don't know, um, I checked on it with an, one of the guys who I deal with in the cryptic community. He um, got some information, he said, from inside sources that at the scene of the Amber Miller killing, he said that this is supposed to be information he wasn't supposed to give out, but one of the largest footprints ever found on record, or not, what did you say? Yeah, one of the largest footprints ever found on record was on the scene of her, I guess, where the incident took place, bipedal. Um, I will send you the link, Ra, on this after yeah, the show. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. That yeah. was sent to me because the guy goes into it. And if y'all have anything that you... I've got a few people that you might want to talk about who has deeper, extensive knowledge into the greater details of these cases and stuff like that, way more than I have, because there's a lot of stuff. Um and these things, I, mm-hmm. I, I can definitely feel that there is uh, so much more involved with this. This is, this is crazy. You know, we hear a lot of the experiences, but we never hear of this side of it. Like every now and then, you hear about like a killing, like Martin Groves goes over in one of his stories in the LBL, where um, a, turkey a turkey hunter, hunter yeah. was was predated upon. Was yeah, was taken, uh, was predated upon when he was escaping. Um, well, I interviewed Martin Groves on the yeah, I interviewed Martin Groves on the show. I met him in person last year. Uh, no I met <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was one of the speakers. I was a panelist last year at Josh's um, Josh's Paranormal Roundtable um, Cryptic Conference, and I'll be flying out to Fort Worth in September for the second annual Cryptic Conference. There's twenty speakers there this year. It's over twenty speakers. We're gonna be. It's gonna be Labor Day weekend, but really excited about that. Um, it's gonna be some big names in this. I'm really excited about it. We had a great time at the conference last year. But yeah, I, I interviewed him. I've got I've got more people to send to you guys too. But I'll throw this out there and maybe this is something you guys might want to talk about with some of your guests on some of the other shows, but there's other things to consider too when it comes to dog man. Um the portals, the orbs and stuff like that, UFOs and stuff like that being seen. Uh and dog man being seen around areas where Bigfoot I mean, so it's a lot of stuff when it comes to this. I don't think it's by chance. I don't think it's by chance. Why, so. why the cover so. up? Why is it being covered up? Yeah, but do you do you think it's more now? Is there is there something that has happened? Is there some type of technology or something that the government? I don't know. I'm definitely grasping for straws here. But what has happened into which people are possibly being eaten by what we would consider a mythical animal? Like what what the hell is going on? To be completely honest, like what do you think? Well. For me, I don't know, but I, if I had to give like some type of possibility for what I think might possibly be happening, I might, I'd probably say um, if these creatures are, we don't know how many of them there are, you know, per population, I mean, for each state or whatever. So if there's a lot of them out there, what if their food supply is dwindling down? What if, like, there's a bunch of them out there hunting, and if you really hear some of these cases when it comes to deer and stuff like that, there's times when people have been actually out in the woods hunting, and the deer came barreling through there and stopped when they got to the hunter, almost like, you know, they said, the hunters would say stuff like, they they never would do something like that before, but they were more afraid of what was chasing them than that that moment. They just stopped. So what if these animals, what if some of them are leaving and going or migrating to other areas to get away from these things? Because some cases, they're be- the animals are being uh, killed or shredded or, or, or ripped apart and stuff like that and not even eaten. Or people to talk about the livestock and stuff like that. So when you look at that, are these things, I'm, I'm not saying that there's people who actually feel like they're these fun-loving creatures, dog men or Bigfoot, they would never hurt a soul. They're not going to hurt you unless you hurt them. I don't. I would never go out into the woods without a, with a weapon because they know, okay, just because you feel like that, don't lose all common sense. Because at the end of the day, whether you feel like that about Bigfoot or dog men or not, there's still uh, mountain lions out there. Wolves, um, everything else. So still, don't, and crazy people. So you just gonna like throw all common sense out the window? I'd rather have it and not maybe not pull it out if you don't want them to know that you have it. They understand if you feel like in your mind that 
they know your thoughts and intentions, then if you take a weapon out there, keep it in your purse or keep it in your knapsack or whatever, and just don't take it out, tell them out loud. (laughs) Because some people believe that. And I don't know. I feel like they're smart enough to understand. I do feel that. So still take it. Take your weapons out there. Take whatever your your kid is and don't be stupid. Don't be stupid when you go out into the woods. Have a survival kit. Take anything, dude. I would take, yeah, I would take, dude, I would take a bazooka, <laughs> a fucking, a ninja star, a wiffle ball bat, something. But I, there's, I, no, there's no way. There's I, no I, way. I believe, though, if they are, um, you know, if they can do this mind speak, you know, they they can read your mind. So they can, they know your intentions. So if you're going out there with a gun and intention of shooting one, of course, you know, of course they're going to maybe be more aggressive, but if you're going out there for literally for protection and you have this, you know, gun with you and it's there for protection, I'm sure that they can read that as well. Yes. I think they can. I think that they actually do know your intentions. And I do think that they understand. I'm not going to say they understand all English. I think they understand. I just think they're a different type of creature. I do think that they understand people. So there's people who have them on their property, that people that habituate them and feed them and stuff like that. But when you do that, then that can also be a problem, too, because now once you stop feeding them, then that's a problem because now they're going to. There's been people terrorized by Bigfoot because they stopped feeding them. You're gifting them like then you it's just you can't some stuff you just can't do. I'm not going to say, maybe in some cases, you just have to be careful when it comes to this stuff. We don't know what it is yet. And I, I like uh, what y'all was saying. He said he wanted to get a bazooka for his uh, survival kit. You know what? I, I said I wanted one of the machine guns like Rambo had back in the day. I wanted one of those. Oh, <laughs> And I think, yeah, we're gonna sell, we're gonna sell uh, the lost frequency bazookas on our website once we get it up. You know what? Because <laughs> I don't think that uh, assault rifles and stuff like that today. And I'm not promoting the going out there because some people want to go out there and hunt them and bring them in to pr- no the the government the people whoever whoever they are they know that these things exist. You're not gonna bring it to light because you're never gonna be able to prove that body because they're not gonna let it come to light. They don't want it to. There's a cover up. Do you not think that the park rangers and DNR they know that these things are out there. They've seen them, and I'm sure that there's a protocol oh, for this. Do y'all not know that in Washington State and um, the Washington State and New York State that is actually in their laws that it's illegal to kill a Bigfoot? Really? <laughs> yes. Awesome. Look it up. <laughs> are you also are you also not allowed to stab a dragon or smack <laughs> a? You know, like That's what's hilarious. you know, like it's. Right. Well, like, go, going to, going down the going down the path of the dragons is a whole other is a whole like other story. That. Hey, anything's possible. There's pterodactyl sightings. There's videos and stuff like that of pterodactyls, like over Arizona, North Carolina, Texas. I've heard of that. They said that they don't exist anymore. So, ain't no telling what else is out out there. I mean, I don't believe I'm a consp- conspiracy theorist, but I also feel like that. The powers that be have somewhat caused yeah, this. To be I that agree. Way. I agree. It, hmm. it, it, yeah, I totally. We we totally agree. It's just such an interesting way of saying it. I like that. I like the way you said that. That makes me. They've caused it to be that way. It, they cover up too much stuff. They want us to know what they're doing. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Well, no. Yeah, kind of. I think they play a little bit of their hand. You know, it, it's their hand is too well, like. It's not hidden well enough, almost. It's kind of like we we see some stuff and then they hide it, and that is why we become these conspiracy theorists because we've seen shit, we know shit. Well, and they know that they conspire against us, therefore we're going to come up with these things. Hidden, yeah. hidden yeah. in well, plain sight is basically what you just said. And you hear people say a lot of times the yeah. Hollywood movies and stuff like that that they are showing you what they're doing behind the scenes, but you're thinking it's fake, just like that movie. What was that? Eyes wide shut. We were talking about the Illuminati and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, hey, hey. And you yeah, hear about the rich from leading these private <laughs> parties and like these, you know, I'm not even going to go in. You know the kind of stuff that's going on with the secret societies yeah. and stuff. So there's, a, there's, there's an island. There's an yeah. island, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of us who got into like trying to understand like when it came to cryptids and all this other stuff, you kind of end up going down this rabbit hole of, everything else because it it's all intertwined um it's all connected yes. it's all connected i know yeah 
Yeah. And, and it's just it's just different branches of the same damn shit trunk that we're being, you know, <laughs> we're, 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 we're being like, you know, all this shit is covered up. And it's just like, well, this is one branch and it's all it's all connected, you know, by the by the it's all in one. It's all in the same tree. Yes. B, you, you blew you blew, like blew my mind with like do the um, the attack really uh, those things really um, they really hurt me. Um, yeah, that, and I like, really hope these, these family members get some kind of answers because this is it's horrifying and complete BS right all there. in the same thing. There it is, right there. There's the the autopsy report. The autopsy report, right there. She's she's reading it to us. The forensic center, the regional forensic center. Yep. Knox County. Knox County Regional that's, Forensics. That's that's heavy. That's so now, heavy. and that's just for her, and he is here too. Now, what I can do, uh, Rod, because I'm friends with you on uh, Facebook, I can just forward you the um, the link for that, and you can pull it and download it. I just that's what I did, and just printed it off because I have the PDF. Definitely. But I just wanted to say that when it comes to this stuff, you have to be. Everything is not. What it seems, um, I think I feel like we live in the twilight zone, and I feel like that. <laughs> yeah, or, or an episode of Black Mirror, X Files, even. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all, all, all of them, all of them, yeah, and the Matrix. We'll, we'll bring in the Matrix as well. Absolutely. Mm. So, you know, what was that show? And that, Fraggle Rock. <laughs> what's that Netflix show? Stranger Things. Oh, yeah, Stranger Things, yeah, yeah. The, with the upside down. With, uh, which is based on the Montauk. Really? I didn't know that. Now, at the beginning of, I think... Yeah, it's based on the Montauk project. It might have been episode one or two. Yeah. I can't remember which episode, but the girl ended up going into this tree and disappearing into a portal. And this creature, I guess what we in real life would call a cryptid or something like that, weird, like the ra a rake-type creature, what they call the rake or crawlers, uh, brought her into that portal in that tree. And her boyfriend or whatever, ended, or her friend ended up you know, pulling her out of there right in time just as the portal was closing. And then you got, if you think about that, they're showing you some stuff too because then when you talk about uh, David Polites and missing 411, um, Steph Young, uh, something in the woods is taking people. It's some weird stuff. Um, even um, Tom Mesnick, the guy who, if y'all get on, um, I can't remember if it's on Tubi or Peacock, but um, missing, uh, what was it missing four one one the hunted, and the story with Tom Mesnick in there? Um, it was some weird stuff. Listen to some of those missing four one one shows. There's times when oh. people, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think they went. I think they went on a deer drive. Yeah, they were hunting. I think I've heard this. I, I might, if I'm not mistaken. He went missing, and I can't remember if they were calling out to him or. But on one of these episodes, they were calling out to. There was this whole search team looking for this person. And I think this might be a different one than the Tom Mesnick case. But there was a whole search team looking for this particular man. And they could hear him. He should have been just on the other side of the trees. But the more they called out to him, the more he seemed like he was fading away and fading away and fading away. They heard him for up to three or four days. A search team heard him. Like, he's right on the other side of these trees. But they never found him. <laughs> what the and one other thing, the yeah, I, I, I definitely think there's a like there's there's a veil. There's definitely a veil. You know, we're only seeing part of what's really there. And you know, like you're saying, like these, like these, uh, the, the dogmen, where you're saying you only could see like the top half of them, you couldn't see the bottom half. Like they are able to traverse across these portals, you know, or, or to move interdimensionally. It's hard to say because for me. I feel like when it comes down to certain stuff, um, I've seen there's I don't talk about this particular one too much, but there's time there's one time, I'm gonna say maybe two, that I actually saw something actually manifest in real time, like right before my eyes. And that was the one and only time that I captured that on camera. The sad part about it, because if I if that video had not been deleted, I didn't delete it, my mother did. Oh shit. But if that was the one and only time that I can say, you know what? You had a video in your phone that actually showed a dog man or some people believe in cat people. I ain't never seen it. I'm not going to say it doesn't exist because I haven't seen it. For me, anything's a possibility now. But 
this thing had, I can't even tell you, it it had more of the feline type face, but I'm still going to call it a dog, man. But whatever, at the end of the day, I saw it manifesting. And when I say manifest, I mean, you're seeing it building up and coming into focus. Does that make sense? I, I guess that's the best way to explain it. Coming into focus. I would say like something like like tele like Star Trek when they're teleporting in and then they you know they kind of like manif or like uh, materialize maybe materialize within materialize or think about a ghost think about a ghost or something like that when you see them they mani- they materialize to the point where they're now clearly into focus and you can see all the features and details of it I got pictures of ones that are cloaked and it looks like they have a mist in front of their face uh, there's a mist or a fog. Um, a haze in front of the, their face, like where they're hiding in the bushes, but they're they're putting this force field, for lack of a better word, in front of their face to keep you from seeing them. It's like, you really did that? Like you, because re- you can still see the snout, you can still see the eyes. It's like you did it uh, in my mind at those moments. I was like, really, dog man? And I'm not. I wasn't trying to be funny, but it's like you really <laughs> may as well have just for real. <laughs> because you could actually see, you could actually see all the features still. I said, that's a terrible cloaking. That's got to be a baby. That's got to be a juvenile because they didn't know what they was doing. Your parents taught you wrong. (laughs) Dog man, sit your ass down. (laughs) (laughs) You're hilarious. I can't take it. Nobody's going to take this to me. Thank you. Thank you. Well. No, no. I should take it very seriously. B. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have to slowly wrap this up. You have been a wonderful guest. All right. Thank you. And we appreciate it so much. It's been the blue eyes and the darkness. You brought in every uh, every element of the rainbow for me today. And we want to thank you so very much for coming on well, here. Well, thank you. You were an excellent, wonderful guest. I enjoyed it with you guys. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Tell our listeners again where they can find you. Crypto Normal Encounters with BMOS on Facebook and youtube on youtube as well um i'm also on instagram also but thank you guys for having me on the show and y'all have a great night all right that was b moss and uh wow that that interview was spectacular disturbing uh informative and all around uh amazing yeah it was it was um Shocking. Yeah. That's the word that's going to want to pull. That's my adjective of the week. Shocking. Yeah. Uh, um, she but was be- very serious about what she does. She was very descriptive. She was making sure that you, the listener, as well as me and as Ryan and I, were understanding what she's saying. And um, uh, thank you, B. We appreciate it so much. Um, yeah, the, and like, the, you know... The, the dog man with the blue eyes, dude? Yeah, I haven't heard of... Like, you know, the first thing I thought of when she said that was like a husky. You know, like the huskies have kind of like the more of like the whitish right, blue right, eye. Right. That's what I kind of thought I of. I was thinking... I ain't going to tell you what I was thinking, but because uh, I always have stupid things in my head. You know that. <laughs> like, this one... You, do you remember Tom and Jerry? You remember that big dog? Yep. Ike? Ike? Yeah. I was thinking Wasn't like it a... was a bulldog? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like a big black Ike. <laughs> <laughs> so, or or the worst one that came to me. All right, sorry, uh, B. If you listen to this, I'm not. Uh, I'm just. I'm, I'm me. And whenever we meet, I'm I'm conjuring this. Whenever we meet in the future, in Fort Worth with you, um, uh, you. <laughs> I, this is really embarrassing, but I'm spit it say, out. I'm spit it say out. It. When she said that. I don't know if this was either on or off. Once again, I don't know if this was on or off recording, off mic. Okay. But she said that uh, there's dog men. Yeah. And there's also cat people. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. And I was thinking that explains furries. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I don't know why my brain does that. Well, that does not. I actually, surprisingly enough, actually, that popped in my mind as well. But You're scaring me now, though. But no, hang on, though. There. <sighs> I will say, actually, what more popped into into my mind was Dungeons and Dragons. Because you're a dork. I'm. 
so so you can think furries and you're cool. No, no, but no. But when no, I no. saw Dungeons and no, Dragons, no. I'm a dork. And, and, and no, you know what? I'm a I weirdo. Wave, There's a I, difference. I will wave that flag. I will wave the dork Dungeons and Dragons flag. Uh, so th- there, there's there's actually a couple races in the Dungeons and Dragons, and. Uh, I'll get butchered for the one, but uh, the one is a tabaxi, and they're a cat people. Uh, mm-hmm. And and another one mm-hmm. is this lion. Um, it, it's this lion type cat people, um, but I can't remember. But why? That, that's what popped in my mind. I'm like, but if there's dogmen, why can't there be cat people? Yeah. Okay. So cat. I think I think the I think the furries should start wearing dogman suits. <laughs> Well, some of them do, though. Do they? Well, not not dog man, but they wear like dog suits and stuff like that. That would be cool. Like they had the big teeth coming out, and you're like, and you're like dancing with a dog man. That'd be like like the whole next level. You got the furries, and then you got like the, I don't know, the horror furries. I don't know. That would be great. See, that would be something I can get into. I I want to scare you first before (laughs) I make sweet love to you. But (laughs) yeah, that was um. But that, that that interview was amazing, and you know yeah. it, it took a it took a turn yeah. um, that went very serious. Uh, yeah, very. Um, it was dark. It was dark, and it, it brings up a fantastic point. You know, like there, it's not all like, oh, I saw this and I got away, and everything is hunky dory kind of thing. It really shows you another side to these uh, to these creatures I, 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 yeah. if that's what we call them I, I try to be I'm trying to be serious it's hard for me because like me being serious too much hurts my heart it hurts my soul um, because I feel the pain inside and I don't want it to linger in there too long um, but to these these people who have who have lost people um, because of whatever's going on out there um, who knows something is something is happening and it's becoming more and more prevalent well, and like she was saying, like this has been increasing in the last five to ten years, and and I agree. Like it, it, it seems to be you know skyrocketing these these incidents. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man. I guess we're gonna have to make one of those. You know, they have those, those shark suits. You're gonna have to make a dog <laughs> like man like suit. those those chainmail kind of sh- shark shoots. Yeah. Shark or, shoots. Sh- what? Sh- shark shoot sh- 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 Shark suits. Is that a is that a Dungeon and Dragons language? No, that's a tongue twister. Oh, ooh, I know a tongue twister. I made my own. Oh, okay. I really did. Uh, um, cows chew cud because cows choose to chew cud. Yeah, but you shouldn't put because in there. You should say cows chew cud. Cows chew cud because cows chew cud. No, cows choose. See how I'm messing my cows chew cud because cows choose to chew cud. Oh, okay. it has it's a timing oh, thing. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Maybe we should make one. Maybe we should make one. <laughs> it made me spit on myself. <laughs> Maybe we should make one for like uh, the lost frequency. Uh, you know. Oh, like a tongue twister. Yeah, not like the lost frequency, but like you know, You're like Dogman does. <laughs> Sorry, Dogman does. I was going to say Go, something else. Completely. Ghost get got when they go. <laughs> Dogman does Dallas. Dogman does Dallas. Oh my God, you are okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna rate this joke. I'm gonna rate this joke. I'm gonna give it a 33. Okay, but I I, I was oh. I didn't even finish well, it. Well, was... I wasn't even that wasn't even cognitive that wasn't even cognitive that I said 33. Oh, you, you, yeah. you finally got yeah, it, huh? I see, I see. Yeah. So uh, B B, you are the real deal. Uh, Solid. I, yeah, she... I've never heard of a dog man that has like a short hair. Like a, a, a Rottweiler dog man? Yeah, and you know what? Like, what was really fascinating, I know I know you didn't catch on to it right away because you came at a different view, uh, a different perspective, think a different thing, but I saw it as exactly like she was saying was, you know, oh, it's just you. Yeah. Like, the rec- it was recognition that, uh, it's just you. I have nothing to worry about. Like, oh, uh, like maybe it was waiting for someone else. And then it's like, you weren't the person I'm waiting for. I know who you are. I was waiting for, you know, to attack somebody. Or it's just like, oh, nah, it's just you. Let me go. I took it more along the lines of normally she's not there or someone's not showing up. You know, her parents, are, she's probably older at this point, um, And her parents are alone and living in her house. And the dog man's just out there doing dog man things. She pulls up. She's whatever. She said it was divine intervention. Um, and she sees this thing. She shines the light. It turns around and looks at her through the window. Yeah. I think it was trying to size up, who is this? Like, oh, you're not a threat. It's right. Like, I, I know that's how you took it. Right. Yes. And it's yeah. like, oh, I see who you are. You're well, a five-foot, two-inch woman. I, 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 I still woman. feel 
I still feel that that was part of it. But you might be right, too. But yeah. I believe it was recognition. You're not a threat. Oh, you persuaded me, for yeah. sure, because she believed that as well, and I was persuaded by the but argument. But I, ha- I have course. a question. Sure. You said uh, it's doing dogman things. What are dogman things? I don't know. Come playing, on, Tom. Playing Yahtzee? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know I, I love was... how, dude, I love how you set me up. You were really good at that. Uh, what is, what is, I, I have it sitting. I'm like, oh, yes. Uh, yes I got to ask I Tom know, about sh- this. Sh- showing up in a Michael Jackson video in the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it reminds me of, like, you know, like the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer song, you know, all the... The, the reindeer doing playing reindeer games, right, you know, right. doing reindeer thing, doing reindeer you, shit. I always see like Dogman kind of creeping, like like with hands up, and it's just like ah, I don't know. It's just I agree, like Nosferatu, you know, Nosferatu yeah, yeah, is like yeah, Rrr. yeah, just sneaking but Dogman is like like big steps, like trying to be quiet. But it's imagine like, a pit. I am sneaking, out. I am sneaking up, and I'm going to catch yeah. him. Sneaking very, very slowly. Uh, I know you guys can't see this, but I am shaking my head in derision. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pantomiming again, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. It's just uh, not just pantomiming, but the voice. It was a great that was voice. creepier than the dog man. I think I'd rather see a dog man. <laughs> Dude, I might, I might regret those words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So bad. Yeah, have fun driving home, Tom. Oh, dude! Oh, you know, uh, dude, roll I'll those windows up. Roll I those windows. What, I tell you what. Now, if I see one, I'm tell you what. Now, if I see one, I will be calling you. I will be calling you, and for now on, there will be an axe. You know what's awesome, though, is that, sure, try to call me. What, well, service? what service? What service? What, what service? Oh, yeah. you, you, you're out in the booties, man. There's no, 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 no. You said there. driving. Don't don't put him on my property, you jerk. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving out there, sure. I'll just drive okay. by and wave at him, honk the horn, and be like, yeah, 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 tr- chorizos. But, gotcha. but unfortunately, all those topes will be slowing you down. It'll catch up not at on each the highway, tope. Not on, that, not on that two-lane road that oh, goes oh, through the enough. forest out there. I'm good. And topes, for those who don't know, are speed bumps. They're, speed bumps, basically. Yeah. So, More yeah. common than, uh, I don't know. So in a fantastic interview, Ryan? Yeah, that was what fantastic. Do you think? I, I mean, really, what do you think about that? I, Man, for those, of, of course you don't know, but we ended up talking for almost like another like 45 minutes after the interview. And uh, we talked like 25 minutes before the interview. Yeah, it was, th- this interview could have been a double header, triple what, header. What was the name of her, you, you, I'm sure if you type in B... Uh, B Moss. B Moss, thank you yeah. very much. Uh, is it the Dogman? Uh, if, you, if you type in her uh, Facebook... Uh, or, or, or go on YouTube and check her channel out. Um, she's episode twenty one was the one she was pointing us to. Yeah, episode and, twenty one uh, and twenty two. Uh, twenty one and twenty two. I can't remember the first gentleman's name, but the second one was Martin Groves. And uh, yeah, go to her channel, give her some traffic, give her some, uh, give her some love, give her some likes, some thumbs up, and uh, support what she does. Uh, I believe later this year, I think she said September October time, she's going to be at a. Uh, the, the Paranormal Roundtable event uh, with Josh Turner. He's setting up another conference, and uh, she's going to be. I, I'm not sure if she's going to be one of the speakers there. I think she said she might be. Uh, yeah. It's in Fort Worth. Uh, she said it's going to be 20 plus speakers, and she will be there. And uh, so you can go out and see her. She's the real deal. She's legit, and she's scared the living shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> she's scared the crap out of me, especially when she was talking about the. <coughs> Excuse me. The ins and outs and the in-depth parts of the autopsy about the shoulders being oh man, that was way too much for me. Yeah, it, it was. A it was queasy. a lot of in, in-depth information there. Um, but again, that just brings to light that you know it's not all uh, rainbows and uh, cupcakes. Cupcakes. Yeah. I, I always go with the unicorns, but I like the cupcake one. Why not rainbows, sure cupcakes? Yeah. Like the, the. That's not dog man. It's just a dog. <laughs> I, I yeah I guess we just continue yeah it's but a, it's, no no it's not a dog man it's a dog man <laughs> wow Tom that was a fucking home run I told that you was that. a bomb no I t- I'm telling that you right was a now bomber. I told you right now like like if you're if we're talking about language and stuff like that and tutoring you got me you trump me every time that one <laughs> sorry bro. Sorry, Do you no. really think that he thought oh, that was a oh, 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 that was a, that was dog. a home run. Because okay, okay. I know, I, I, know I did a call to action at the beginning. Yes. Let's another call to action. There we go. Let's rate the dog man joke. Yeah. I, I personally, you know, on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give it a two. You don't know what you're talking about. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! Well, that's what I am. Look, if you're going to know who I am, one day, yeah, one day, uh, I'm course, sure. Of course, One day we're going to be there, and you guys are going to come along with us. And when that, we're in your region, if we're in in West Virginia, Linda, come out and see us. If you're going to be, if we're going to be in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, we're going to see Daryl. Or we're if we're see, in Oregon, we're in Oregon. We're going to see Blake. Yep. 
And uh, when you see me, you're going to realize I'm the same person on this podcast as you see me when you meet me. I would say I'm, I'm pretty close to being the same, too. Um, maybe sometimes a little scattered. Until he walks. Until he walks. His walk is something to behold. What? You, you, got, a, you got a bit of a knuckle-dragging walk. You got a big foot walk to you. Well, because I have big feet. What size is your feet? Uh, 13. That's what I wear. Okay. Yeah, but that's true, but you're way shorter than me. Yeah. You're like the letter L. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, Ryan, rate that joke. Okay. <laughs> Rate that joke. Cool. 4.5. Whoa. Hey, you're, you're I'm moving striking up. out. I'm striking out with no, you No, no, you're moving up, man. You're moving oh, up. Let's, let, let's see if we can finish this. Uh, finish thanks. strong. Finish strong. So, so but, you guys get out there. You gotta do, like I said, go to the... Don't go down there by yourself. But if you're going to go to the darkest portions of your city, like, you know, like uh, San Francisco, there's some bums down there right now or, you know, having a good old time. But, what, but, see if well, they have any stories. But you know what, though, is that it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the city, you're like, oh, I'm not going to see anything. No, no, no. Oh, that's I, not I, where I was going, but sure, this yeah, is great. Like, I, I've, I've heard people tell stories of stuff in the inner cities. Mm. You know, like there was a dog man, werewolf, running beside me, beside my vehicle. I've seen a picture on YouTube today, of, excuse me, on Facebook today, okay. of a coyote with uh, a rabbit in its mouth on top of a power line. And I wanted to send it to you because people were laughing like, ha that's hilarious. I'm thinking, how the hell did that get? I mean, not not like these power lines. I'm talking like higher ones. Like, Are those like those crisscross girder ones? Like those? No, no, not that quite. That has somewhere in between the two. Okay. I got what you're saying. But, but yeah, like, like a telephone, like I mean, like a power pole. Yeah. So it's like a pole. But, and there's a, a freaking coyote stuck in the top of it with like an animal in its mouth. Like, how does that happen? I'm sorry to bring it up, but like you were talking about inner cities, and it just might, it sparked a sparked a, something in my mind. Like coyotes and inner cities go hand in hand. I know. Oh, do they? <laughs> Not at all. The, the, sorry. I, I think in LA. I, I'm giving LA, you a hard dude. time, Tom. Sorry, you never caught that one. I, I, I am just I just not on your I'm not on your your frequency. Wait a minute, maybe I am. Ooh. You're on the lost frequency. <laughs> but because our frequency is lost. Yeah, with us two for sure. We're lost. <laughs> So, Speaking of, okay, so let's, 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 let's reel it back in. Let's, let's, I agree. Let's use the analogy. Let's reel it so, in. So, if you have any of those stories, if you've seen anything, you know, why don't send us what a message? What kind of stories? Right, I love, I, I'm putting you on the spot. What kind of stories? Well, UFO, abduction. You know, the time that Batman abduction. brought you a cake. Come uh, on. You know, I, I really would like to hear some glitch in the matrix stories. Or if you have done any type of... Um, any type of research into paranormal, any type of research into like you know lost history or anything like that, hook us up. I'm looking and I'm looking for gnomes and small forest like humanoids. I'm talking like these really. I'm talking like two and three foot ones. I've heard stories. I've seen things. Uh, on these, rise distracting me. What are you looking at, right? I don't know. Do you see the light? Yeah, I see the light, but it could be a plane again. It could be a plane again. I know that's I, like, I love but it. It, it, this one looked like it appeared out of nothing. But it could be, uh, could have been a cloud no, bank. It's, it's it came a plane. Out. You can see the tail. Right, right. Let's look at that. I, I can't. I, see, I, I, see I the, gotta wear glasses. I see the plane. Right, right. See these planes. Yeah, all these kind of stories. Gnomes, elves. <clears throat> There's a reason why it's in these Dungeon and Dragons. I'm sure you have elves in it, right? Yes, we have elves. We have gnomes. We have, uh, yeah, there's... Yes, and I've heard about people in England. They seem to be fairies. I I heard in England they've... There's fairies. Yes. Dungeons and Dragons, fairies. Oh, I was talking about the real... Well, Well, Dungeons and Dragons is real. It is? (laughs) It is real. <laughs> Actually, I was listening to I was listening to uh, Paranormal Around Table with Josh, and he had the well, guy. Dungeons are real. But well, he was. He had a guy on there was talking about like were all this um, people like you know Stephen King. Where did they get all this information? And he believes that it's like LSD. No, no, he believes that it's actually coming in from like other other uh, realities or other truths. Like that really is real. So the person who created, let's say, the person who created Dungeon Dragon created these things from something that was feeding into his mind from another reality possibly like there is like a alternate sense. dimension and that makes sense yeah because if you think about like the, you know the only thing that people are allowed to have in this in, in this what we would call in base, base reality, reality base reality I right like that, yeah. um, is they, they they only allow for like two things the muse and imagination but mm-hmm. what do you think everything that you've been inside like a car Someone had to pull that from another 
somewhere else because it didn't exist here before they created it. I agree. No, hear me out on this one. I actually believe the most powerful thing we have, I know people be like, oh, love. No, no, it's imagination. I actually believe our imagination is much more powerful than you give it credit for. Mm. And that's why I believe that as you get older, they kind of stomp it out of you. Well, I, 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 I'm going to say that's fine. You can have your opinion, but I'm definitely going to go with love. <laughs> you All we you'll need never, is you'll love. Never, you'll never, do, do, you'll do, never do, do. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. It's the most powerful thing there is. And it can also okay. hurt a lot, too. Can, I love you guys. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so. <laughs> He's still looking what, at the plane. No, there's no plane. <laughs> the plane, the plane. No. Plane of existence. Bam. Why don't we... Uh, I think we should wrap this up then. Wrap I think it up? we're good. Yeah. yeah. And definitely shout out to B, B Moss. I really appreciate you. Uh, it was pretty short notice, you know, um, and you totally were on board with it. So uh, thanks. Thanks. And thanks for laughing at my joke. I finally got you. It took, it took me a minute, <laughs> but I got you. Uh, um, so, and as we were yeah. saying, though, I, I, I know we, we like, we got totally, we've been totally distracted, but circling back, any experiences, email us, the Lost Frequency Podcast at gmail.com, or you can find us in our Facebook group, the Lost Frequency Podcast, or send it to us uh, in Facebook as well. You can you can find me. Uh, my name is Tom Franklin. You or, can send. You can DM me. Yep. Or or Rivos and send us a message. Yeah. Or you know, even if you're on, or if you're on YouTube, you know, send us a message on YouTube. Yes. If you're if you're watching on YouTube and you're like, oh, dude, I've had this great story, you know. Write it in the comments. We'll get we'll get back to you, and you know we'll hook Did you. Do you have that on TikTok too? Where they can... uh, TikTok, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't TikTok know. too. You can send us the comments on TikTok. TikTok uh, too. It's almost like TikTok too. TikTok too. Exactly. That would be a whole know. new other platform. Yeah, but send those stories out, guys, and uh, and uh, uh, share it with your friends. And you know, like uh, Rice said at the beginning, hey, try to get a couple people to come on. Someone at you at your work be like, hey, you. One time you said something about the boogeyman. <laughs> Um, you would like this you, group. You would like join this, this group. Facebook group. And, jo- and join us, and let's have some fun. Let's let's delve deep into this stuff. Let's find out what is really going on, whether it's a government conspiracy, alternate dimensions, uh, separate realities, no matter what it is. I, I And I feel that, like, every episode we dig a little bit deeper. You know, we, we pull a little bit, you know, we pull one of those uh, covers off a little bit more. You know, we go in a little bit deeper. D- covers that you didn't, didn't even know there was to be pulled off. That's what's getting me. A what? Uh, covers that you didn't realize were there to oh, be pulled yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's yep. killing me yeah. right now. Each layer. We're just removing layers of layers and we're yeah, going back to like onions layers again. of an onion and, and underneath that's a radish. <laughs> 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 yeah. We want to we want to thank you all very much for uh, watching us. And remember, and not watching us, listening to us. Well, watching us as well. Could be YouTube. If yeah, this we'll is on there. YouTube. we got to take a couple more pictures of you and me. Oh, you know, no. for the ladies. Or the gentlemen. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not specific. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're listening to the Lost Frequency Podcast, where we bring the periphery into focus. And it wouldn't be the end of an episode without, without a, motorcycle a motorcycle driving by. Signing off. It's a dog, man. <laughs> <laughs> Two times a charm. We close with good night, good luck. And God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth.